Hey people, how are you doing? So recently, I have figured out a bug while doing code review, and the bug is because of using of var over late, you know, with the for loop. And also uh, on Twitter, I got a request to kind of giving a little bit more explanation of how the var or late keywords really matter for a loop like for loop. So this video, we are going to discuss about the var, let, and the for loop together, which one should be used and what kind of problem might come for one to use versus another one. All right. So without any further delay, let's get started. But before that, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thank you. All right. So let us understand the usage of var and let in the context of loop in JavaScript. In our case, we have taken an example of for loop. So what we'll be doing right now is like we'll be diving into some code and try to understand how the keyword var and let is going to influence a lot of stuff in the context of a loop. The example that I have in hand is a simple function called test having a for loop and which is having like from i0 to 10 and it is printing this console.log over here inside the for loop and outside the for loop it also print the value of i. So this is the program if I save this one it's going to run what it is going to run it is going to print all the you know iterative values like from i is equals to 0 till 9 0 till 9 is printed and outside also it printed a value called 10 so why it is happening it is happening because the variable that you declared using the keyword var it's a function scope what exactly a function scope means it means the value of that particular variable is accessible anywhere within the function if it is defined with var inside the function all right so though it is defined inside declared inside the for loop but it is inside this particular function so i's value is accessible beyond the for loop as well so i will iterate from 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 when it comes to 9 then the increment happen it becomes 10 then this comparison happens 10 less than 10 no it is false so it doesn't go inside doesn't print the 10 but the i value has already been incremented to 10 and that is the values being printed over here so this is the impact of var now if i just change this var to something called let so what exactly going to happen in this case if i am running this particular program it is going to print from 0 to 9 once again but while printing the last one it is going to throw an error called uncaught reference error why because the let the variable declared with let is not in, with the function scope it is with the block scope what exactly block in JavaScript? The block in JavaScript which is starting with this parenthesis, ending with this parenthesis. The block can be with for loop, the block can be with if, block, block can be with else, block can be anything, you know, which may or may not have a keyword associated, meaningful keyword associated with uh, JavaScript, but always has this pair of parenthesis. So if I'm declaring something like with, the, with for, like with let, so this scope of this particular variable is only within this blob. Outside of this blob, the scope is not at all relevant. That's the reason when I'm accessing it over here, what is happening? I am getting a reference error that the i is not defined because i is only defined using this block. i is not defined outside of it because let is block scope, var is function scope. So when you're using this, this is a very, very meaningful difference that you have to keep in mind, my friend, because otherwise you will be introducing some bugs. Now, the next example, what I'm going to show is much, much more interesting. Take a look. In this example, what we have, I have a bunch of buttons, like one, two, three, four, five buttons. And uh, these buttons are laid out here with the name loop test one, loop test two, and till loop test five. What I'm expecting is basically when I click on this one, it's going to print the number one, this one, two, three, and so on. And to do that, what I'm doing is like, I want to query each of this element from, you know, um, HTML using their ID using the DOM uh, API, I can do that. I can do document.get element by ID, passing this ID, I should be able to get this button. And then I can add a click listener to it. What exactly click listener means? Click listener is something that gives us a function so that whenever somebody click on an HTML element, we can actually perform certain actions using that action, using that particular function. So if I click on this button, I can have a click listener associated to this button so that whenever I am clicking on this particular button, I can actually do something. For example, uh, writing on the console, making a network call, fetching something from database, I can do anything. 
for our example because we are just learning about for uh, for loop with var and let what we'll be doing we'll do something simple stuff we'll be logging into the console so first thing is like we have to query each of this button so what i'm doing over here in the in this particular code let's go step by step i have five buttons so i have started uh, a loop from i equals to one to i equals to five now for each iteration for example for i equals to one i am doing a document dot get element by id of loop test button i equals to one means loop test button one which is my first button like if i get first button so um, you know like this is called template literal and this is like the expression in that and i will be resolved to one now after getting that button what i am doing the next step is like i am actually adding a event listener which event and listener i am adding it's like a click handler so click listener once once the click event happen anything and everything that i write inside this particular function this particular function that is going to happen in this case i am just logging the value of i this function is called an anonymous function or a callback function it is called anonymous because this particular function doesn't have a name great it's awesome example so it means that if i am clicking on this loop test one i am supposed to get i equals to one if I do loop test 2, I am supposed to get 2, 3, 4, 5. That's, that's the way. So let's test this out. I am clicking on this one. Whoa, I got 6. No, that's not expected. I click on this one. I got 6 again because it's printed 2 times. This one, again 6, again 6, again 6. Whoa, that's wrong, right? Now, this is not something expected. But I will explain why it is happening. But before that, let's fix this. The only fix problem is like change this var with let and then rerun this program once again and let's see what happened if i click on this i get one if i click on this i get two three four five i'm getting the expected output but why exactly this is happening okay so the problem when it was var in the case of var was it's like as the variable declaring with var is a functional scope it means it is available beyond the boundary of this particular for block right so the problem here is the variable i within each of this anonymous function for each of the iteration for the first iteration anonymous function second iteration anonymous function third and so on each of the anonymous function is bound to the variable outside of the function which is like this particular variable i which is able to change outside of the scope of this particular for loop and it is the same variable so if i am doing with the let if i am creating with the let i equals to zero for every iteration for every iteration that this making the loop will have a new variable i okay very important point the loop will have a new variable i if it is with let and that value of i will be assigned with the value on the iteration that is going on so if it is one it will be like i equals to one a new value if it is uh, i equals to three uh, then it will be like three and so on so this is the reason when i'm doing with let for every iteration i is getting a new new variable assigned with the new value of the current iteration and that is what we are getting printed in this case when, when i'm clicking on this but for var it is not the case it is actually bound to the same variable which is outside the scope of for and it is already incremented from one two three four five to six and that is why when it was with var i was getting six now this example we can understand little bit more clearly when we have a concept of closure i don't want to mix that closure concept in this particular loop loop video because here i am just going to talk about the kind of problem you might face when you use var instead of late when you're dealing with the loop next video we are going to talk about you know up next i'll be talking about some of the closure and the scope related things where you will be understanding this much much better way like how closure is playing a role in terms of var how closure is playing a role in terms of let right so for this video it is just with for loop or the loops like how far var and let behaves so what is the conclusion wherever possible please use let don't use var because using var you are making the scope a little bit wide open beyond the loop and that might cause certain bugs in your program i hope you enjoy this i hope you learned it now go ahead and do some practice